Hi guys, Tony Dubs here, and today I'm doing a video review on the Hi Fine Man RE2000 earphones. Now, these earphones are cheap to say the least. They come in at $1,500. In the UK, you can find it for around £1,200. You will have to buy it from Hi Fine Man's website. I'll try and find some UK links, but when I looked at the time of making this video, it's very hard to find direct UK links. What you might also come across is the gold model of the uh, RE2000s. It's not the version I'm reviewing over here. The gold model, um, apart from being aesthetically different, as in having a gold finish rather than a silver finish, has a slightly warmer tendency in terms of overall sonic capabilities. And I'll get into that in just a bit, but I haven't heard the gold version. I'm just going on based on uh, what a Hi-Fi man have actually told me. So without further ado, let's go into this review. So first off, it's the accessories and packaging, what you get in the box. Now you've got this little uh, carrying case, which isn't the easiest thing to open in the world. Uh, but nevertheless, when you do open it, you'll be able to store your earphones. As you can see, I'm kind of struggling. There you go. Uh, you can plug in, uh, well, plug in, put in your earphones over here and have the cable loop around over here. Um, it's not the best of designs and I would have liked to see um, not only a hard metal case included but also a soft carrying pouch uh, because if you're going to pop them in your um, in your pocket it would be useful. Um, a bit disappointed on that front and also just generally in terms of what Hi-Fi Man have included in the box alongside the earphones. I would have just liked to see a lot more. So for example um, you've got a, a very small selection of tips. Uh, you've got uh, dual flang and triple flang tips and they're all silicon based tips. There's no foam tips included. Now in a gold variant you do get Comply T400 tips. That's great but yet again I still feel it's a little bit lacking in comparison to some of its competitors that offer a wide variety of different tips or even earphones that cost a quarter or a tenth of its price uh, will offer more uh, tips uh, to play around with. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that respect. You've got ear hooks, which is great, um, although I can't really see why people would take £1,200 uh, earphones on a run, but nevertheless, if you are that type of person and you've got ear hooks, and the reason you might need these is because there's no memory cable, so it's just uh, um, a loose cable um, which goes into the earphones. And then you've got some extra strain reliefs and little connectors. That's quite useful if you've got a custom cable uh, that you, you want to make, for example, or um, if you just want to replace it uh, for, for longevity if something goes wrong with the, uh, the cable that's included. Now the cable itself is removable, it's not very easy to remove, it's got a two pin connector, um, it, it does take quite a lot of uh, force and I, I'm, I was very careful because I don't want to damage 1,200 pound earphones but you can just yank, um, yank them out from here, um, just do not pull from here uh, whatever you do um, because it will uh, damage the earphones. Now um, the, the earphones themselves, the, the cable um, has got no no sort of problems I would say, it's just that I wasn't a big fan of the straight 3.5mm jack um, uh, termination, I would have liked a right angle jack uh, termination um, and and or um, a, a cable with a microphone, an inline mic. Now I do appreciate that people who are going to be using these earphones aren't going to be plugging them directly in the, into your smartphone, but let's say if you do want to have that, I would have liked if Hi-Fi Man actually included that as an option, um, or having just several different types of cables. The cable length is uh, it's, it's perfectly fine, I think it's about 1.2 meters or so, or maybe a little, a little bit more. Um, now the cable itself doesn't get tangled easy, so if I just do this, um, it's pretty easy to untangle, uh, it comes out very nicely. It's got a rubbery material um, to it and it's not overly thick. Um, in terms of microphonics, you don't hear uh, any microphonics, aka cable noise, simply because these earphones are worn over the ear and therefore pretty much eliminate any sort of cable noise that you've got. And then the cable kinch it's, itself is very nice to use, uh, very easy uh, when you want to store these earphones away as you can see like that. Now hopefully my hand isn't getting in the way too much, but nevertheless. Now another thing I want to mention, and again something I'm a little bit disappointed about, is uh, the looks and the design. Whoever I showed these earphones to, they were just gobsmacked at the price um, that I told them. Now regardless of the price of earphones, or what earphone prices should be, or what, what they thought they should be, the design really didn't lead to premium looking earphones. If you compare these to, for example, um, the IE800s, or uh, God, the, the Western W80s, or um, AKG's K3000, 
um, and three, then you're gonna see the difference in terms of design and build quality. It looks a lot more premium looking, whereas these just look relatively cheap and uh, even from afar, you'd potentially think these are um, earphones that you'd get potentially with like a with a with your airline. So when you're flying, you get a bunch of earphones. I know who does earphones, but anyway, you get you get the idea. It doesn't look like a premium looking earphone. Also, in terms of left and right indicator, it's on the um, it's on the strain relief. It might be very hard for my camera to pick up. Um, and I, I must say, I, I would have liked a little bit better differentiation between uh, between the two, or something like a little a red and a blue mark on, on the on on the actual earphones. It should be pretty obvious when you're picking them up, but nevertheless, it's just some sort of um, small aesthetics that make a big difference when it comes to using them on a daily basis. So I can't really say I'm that impressed with them uh, in terms of looks and design. And also comfort. Um, I have no complaints with the cable. I actually really love the cable. It's among one of the best cables uh, I've come across in terms of cable noise and just uh, pure comfort. Reminds me of Audio Phonax uh, cables um, that, that or really popular or were popular uh, back in the days. But um, the, due to the design of these earphones, and I'll try and show you in just a bit, but essentially the way it fits in your ear canal, you've got this little bit here kind of sticking on the edge of your ear canal. Now obviously, as they might say, your mileage may vary. It's all dependent on your ear shape and, and whatnot. But um, in this case, I found that this little edge over here was just um, kind of brushing within the inner bit of my ear, so not within the ear canal. Uh, you'll see what I mean when I put them on, but essentially that felt it was a little bit uncomfortable, and especially when I wore them for several hours on end. So for example, when I was gaming uh, or when I was just commuting and or listening to them at work, I had to get them off for a little while because they caused a little bit of discomfort. Um, it's not a massive problem, obviously, again, it depends on the size of your ears, but if you've got relatively small ears or um, or small ear, ear canals and you're going to have to get a, a quite interesting fit, for example, a triple flying tips, then I think you might find these a little uncomfortable, shall I say, <laughs> um, uh, over time. So now I'm going to show you the fit. Now it looks a bit weird because um, I just want to show you what I was talking about. Essentially this little part over here kind of goes on my um, the inner bit of my ear and you can see how they fit over the ear and how they look like. Now that's a good fit for me. Uh, it might look a little bit odd uh, to some. Some people think it's not actually in but I get a great seal like this. Uh, in terms of isolation as well, I should mention that um, I had no sort of problems um, with them but that said, um, they're not going to isolate uh, that great. I know it's a real close-up of my face that you can see over here, but um, you're not going to get the best isolation simply because of the overall size and the fact they're just universal earphones. They're not custom-made earphones. Um, phone tips did increase um, or they improve the isolation, uh, but it's not something um, that you're going to cancel out every single sound around you uh, and be um, totally immersed in your sound. So just bear that in mind. Um, I could hear a lot of train noise and commuting noise when I was when I had these on. So um, something to bear in mind. And now let's talk about the sound quality, the most important part of this review. Now. I do get asked quite a bit, uh, why, what do I test it with, how do I put my source? Well, the source I've got um, is my smartphone uh, or my computer. Uh, so I've used a different uh, DAC. So for example, on the go, I was using my smartphone's DAC, so my OnePlus 5T's inbuilt um, DAC um, by the Snapdragon 835, I think, uh, chipset it's got. So pretty poor. Then you've got the um, uh, iFi's XDSD which I was using via Bluetooth. Um, so Bluetooth aptX HD and then plugged into um, to this uh, little DAC. And then at home I was using the uh, Chord Mojo and then the Chord uh, Hugo 2 uh, as well to test. And in terms of the, the files I was using, a variety of different files of different genres just to see in terms of how its capabilities my personal uh, taste is R&B music uh, and dance music. That's what I listen to on a daily basis. But when I come to testing, I test of like a variety, give a good sort of idea of what um, I listen to. So we can talk about things like System of Down, which is not something I would li usually listen to, but something I would usually test. Then I'd go to some orchestra, classical music, jazz, and then go into the music that I normally listen to, which my ears are normally accustomed to, and then I can uh, base up an opinion. And here it is. Here is my opinion. <laughs> I know that's uh, what you've been waiting for, right? Anyway, the, the, the overall sound quality is actually very, very good. And it kind of surprised me because when I first put them on, I was a little bit, not disappointed, but I was just, I was like, oh, they're a little bit V-shaped, a little bit warm sounding. 
But after time, they really grew on me. And it, not should I say justified the price, but it really made me realize how good uni these universal earphones um, can be. Not many earphones have really wowed me or really give me this sort of sense of like, oh, I could use these on a daily basis. They could replace my daily drivers, uh, my customs, and they could be the ones I can go to. And these earphones, out of all the earphones I've tried, and I've tried about 100 to 120 different earphones, were the ones that I really felt kind of drawn to. They, they really had that sort of fun yet precise sound signature that I really love. So going through the individual sound frequencies, sub bass first. Now sub bass, I got a great extension. It, it didn't cut off, it had a lovely rumble. Um, it's not overly pronounced uh, like some bassy earphones are, but it had a great sub bass extension. The mid bass was precise, concise, and precise. I said twice, <laughs> but it was really precise. It wasn't, it didn't feel over bloated. But yet, because it's a dynamic, well, a, a, a dynamic driver with a, a, a topology um, diaphragm, as, um, as Hi-Fi Man call it, you get a nice little thumping feeling. So, whereas earphones that have dynamic drivers seem to kind of have a little bit of a wobble in comparison to balanced armature drivers, or balanced armature drivers that have a lot of control but very little uh, quantity, and that's when you start getting hybrids and then you get weird crossovers, this just had a great like mid bass slam and it, it was great to hear it in a sort of flagship model. But as a result there was a slight dip in the lower mids and I felt that the lower mids weren't as accurate as some or as flat as some audio files might like it. Now I'm not trying to say that's a bad thing because as I just said at the beginning these earphones were something that I could really listen to on a daily basis. Especially for my music genre I really felt that that, that sort of missing a uh, bit of frequency or a little dip wasn't a problem because that's how that music really kind of draws to. I mean, I'm gonna say Beats by Dre, you gonna be like, no, it's not an audiophile brand. Of course it's not, but it's got a V-shaped sound signature for a reason because R&B music is accustomed to having really strong bass and accentuated trebles. It's not the case with these, but what I'm trying to say over here is that it's dip mids aren't necessarily a problem, but if you want a flat sound signature, then I don't think you'll achieve these with, with these type of earphones. You'll be looking for balanced armature drivers or multiple uh, multiple tues of different balanced armature drivers shoved into an earphone or custom um, um, modded um, earphones. So what I'm trying to say over here is that there was a little dip in the lower mids. In the upper mids, I had no problems whatsoever. It sounded very nice. It didn't sound bad. Vocals came out really well. Uh, and I was very impressed with the, the overall um, the the overall sound that came out. In terms of the treble, as in the highs, they extended very well, but yet they weren't sibilant, they weren't ear piercing, they didn't they weren't annoying at any point. They just sounded great. They 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 sounded as I would want them to do when it comes to a uh, higher frequency. The sound stage bit of a mixed bag. Reason I say that is because it's got fantastic instrument separation, great sort of positional cues. The decay, however, is a little bit weird, and I say decay is because of the housing itself. It, it just didn't really feel like, at times, that I was really involved with the music. And then, in terms of the width and depth, you've got a decent width, but the depth is kind of lacking. It, it just doesn't, it will never replicate, like, let's say, a set of, you know, a set of headphones like these. It just won't sound, um, sound the same. It, it, it doesn't give you that kind of overall sound. I, I know, just comparing, a, a flagship headphone there, but in comparison to other earphones, so for example, the Western that I mentioned before, or even custom driver, uh, custom uh, modded earphones, so even the um, uh, Harsh Acoustics, or now the Peer uh, SH2s, which um, are earphones I absolutely love uh, due to their sound signature, and they're not technically as good as these, but their sound stage is really more involving and keeps you more engaged. So I would have liked to see a little bit better uh, sound stage um, with these earphones. But overall, as I said before, the sound is very impressive. Now, it's a little bit hard one to call because for flagship earphones, I would expect almost like a flat sound of a flat sound signature. People take headphones or speakers, and if they've got slight sort of 
a warmth to them, they'll say that these are V-shaped or these are warm sounding and no, they're not made for audiophiles because audiophiles want a flat sound signature. But if you want something a little bit fun, but yet very accurate and yet very capable throughout the frequency range, then I think you'll struggle to find earphones for around £1,200 that compete with the RE2000. I, I know there's many that you could find under that price range that have a more flat sound signature or more neutral sounding uh, sound signature and those can be found for around £200, £100 even. But they won't be as um, great throughout the frequency range nor provide that same sort of sonic capabilities. And I must say, I'm very impressed by the RE2000s. Now, would I recommend them? Well, it's very expensive. That's my problem. It is very, very expensive. And in honesty, that was my concern with the W80s that I reviewed before. It was that they were very expensive for the price and I just expected more. Now, W80s didn't really give me that sort of fun sound signature, but they were very accurate. They didn't miss that sort of bass and they were made more flat sounding, but at the same time, very dull. These, however, were fun. They, they kept me ex excited, and even though they didn't have that involving soundstage or weren't technically flat, I went back to these earphones quite a lot and used them as my daily drivers, and I must say, they're very, very impressive. Now, before I clock off on the video, I should also say that it is dependent on what source you use. Now, the reason I mentioned the, the, the amps and DACs that I use is simply because I had a slight observation, whereas when I use the XDSD, it's felt a little bit sibilant. When I put it on the Yugo 2 or even the, uh, the Mojo or even on the uh, Audio Engine D1, I was quite impressed by how these DACs were able to really not drive these earphones, but give these earphones that life that were, was needed. Now I'm a big believer in if an earphone is very expensive, it should be good with even your smartphone. But unfortunately, that's not the case with these. And it, what I've come to to realize over over the time of reviewing earphones and high-end gear is that you're going to need the high-end gear to complement it. So I would say go out and buy these if you have the right source. If you're going to be listening to that type of music. But if you don't have those things, I don't think you're going to get the most out of these earphones. And it's just my honest opinion there that I would suggest, for example, a Chord Mojo, you know, it's affordable. But if you're buying earphones like this, then I think you should be able to afford something like the, the Yugo 2 or, for example, the Audio Engine D1, which is very cheap uh, in comparison to what these are. But it's something that's, that will really drive them. So there we go guys, hopefully you enjoyed this review, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think, uh, other than it's ridiculous price, but let me know what you think about these, if you've got them, or if you're thinking about them, or if you want any more opinions or comparisons, then be sure to let me know, I'll be more than interested to, to read your comments and obviously reply to them. Um, make sure you check in the links in the description below to um, Hi-Fi Man's website, uh, again, huge thanks for Hi-Fi Man to send, them, uh, send these to me, I'm going to be very sad sending them back, but nevertheless, uh, very much appreciate them. Um, uh, actually sending them to me, really appreciate that. Um, and again, check the links in the description below, buy links will be there as well. Um, and more than anything, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, favorite, share, all that good stuff. I don't have to tell you that. So there we go guys, I've been totally dubbed, hope you enjoyed this re review, take care, and bye bye.